He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He is victorious over all, no matter what you're going through this morning. God is victorious. No matter if you're still facing any situation, God is still victorious anyway. He's already won the battle for you. He's already won. You just have to claim the victory and walk in victory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We're so glad to see you all in the house of the Lord this morning. And for those watching on Facebook, we're glad to have you on this morning. Make sure that you like and comment to let us know that you're joining in with us this morning. And just let the spirit flow right where you are. Amen. So we're having a couple of announcements this morning. If you realize, of course, I'm not Sister Brenda. Sister Brenda has a little bit of a you know sinus issue going on this morning. But we are, I'm going to be doing the announcements. Don't forget tonight at 5 o'clock, I'll be bringing the um, online word for this evening. So you don't want to miss it. We've been going through a study of Hebrews. And we're going to be in chapter 4 tonight. You don't want to miss. So tune in tonight at 5 o'clock. Facebook and YouTube. Don't forget, Monday night is prayer meeting, 6 o'clock online. Facebook and YouTube, you can post or text your prayer request on Facebook. Uh, several of the uh, groups that Sister Marsha has, you can text them to Pastor Sister Brenner and myself. And then Tuesday night at 6.30, we will have the Youth Word. Um, and then Wednesday night at 6.30, we'll have Bible study with Pastor. So you don't want to miss anything that goes on during those times. I know that um, some people say, well, you know, I can go back and watch at a later time because it's online. But you really don't want to miss out in the moment. Because if we miss out in the moment, then that's the way the enemy gets to us. He says, well, you know, you're too busy right now. You can go back and watch it later. But then later never comes. Come on. And you never know what word you're going to miss out if you miss out on that lesson, on that sermon. So tune in on these times expecting a word from God and expecting a blessing from God. Our next announcement announcement. Don't forget the uh, Ladies Conference, the Mississippi Church of God Ladies Conference, the GLOW Women's Conference, uh, March the 24th and 25th of this year. It's going to be at Christway. The registration fee, the early bird rate is $40 to be turned in by March 8th. What is the date we're asking? Um, let me see. No, that's youth camp. March 8th. So by the 5th. If you're, if okay, so March 5th, if you're going to the ladies' conference, turn in your $40 registration early bird rate for March the 5th that's to next us. next Sunday. Next so Sunday. You can register online up until March 8th, but if you want us to submit it for you by next Sunday. Yes, and then if you want to pre-order your T-shirt, it's $20 as well to pay by March the 8th. After March the 8th, the entire cost is $50, um, and a t-shirt, to my understanding, is not guaranteed after the registration. So if you want all of that, make sure to get that deal in because if, it, if you do the regular registration rate plus well, if you buy, I don't know if they're going to even have t-shirts there, uh, extra t-shirts other, other than what they order, but even if you did, that would be $70 total when you can save and just do $50 um, you know, or actually just $60 here uh, for the early bird and for your t-shirt. Uh, the conference is going to feature, of course, worship, friendship, and fun. They're going to have food trucks. They're going to have a boutique for the ladies. All oh, the ladies love to shop, right? Yes. And so uh, bring some extra spending and some mad money. And so that way you can shop at the boutiques. Of course, they all go, I think, to the Church of God Orphanage up in Sevierville, Tennessee. The proceeds do. So it's benefiting a good cause. And then they're going to have the baskets of blessings and a silent auction and door prizes. And of course, the speaker is going to be Sister Teresa Arwood. Uh, um, have we heard her before? I've not, but I, I do believe it'll be a blessing. It's going to be a blessing. Yes, amen. So don't forget about that. Also, our next announcement is for our youth camp. <coughs> It is here and now. It says revival is here and now. John 4 and 23 is the theme. And we are saying that to have your early bird money turned in by which date, Pastor? Today. To, Got to have it today to be able to get it in in time. Um, that, re, that registration fee is $25 early bird to get in for the early bird deadline. We've already had a couple that turned in their money. And so we want to make sure if you have a child that wants to go to youth camp, I have a list from 
last year. So I have an idea of who may want to go, but I still need to know from you. So make sure you come and talk to me um, and just let me know that you want to go. And before you leave this campus today, make sure you put that $25 in for your early bird registration fee. Or if you don't have it on hand in cash, we have PayPal. So you can send it through PayPal to us and that way and put it in the instructions for so-and-so's youth camp, for this child's youth camp early bird fee. And that will have them covered. And we will, of course, love, we would love to see <clears throat> all of our youth go and get a blessing. The primary school ages 7 to 11 is June 12th through 16th. High school ages 15 to 18 is June 19th through 23rd. And middle school ages 12 to 14, June 26th through the 30th. There is always something happening at youth camp if we let it. You know, we can go and, you know, some of the kids think, well, it's just, you know, they go because they love the, the fellowship together with one another. They go because it's just time away. And so, but they, we want them to have an experience from God and with God. Yes, sister? Sponsors too today. Though. Oh, yes. Also sponsors. If you want to sponsor a child for youth camp, please let us know today as well so that we can get in that early bird registration, that $25 early bird registration fee, and then we'll worry about the rest at a little bit of a later time. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And so we have several prayer requests that we always go over, and it is important that we go over these just to remind ourselves of these, because life gets us busy, and the enemy wants to distract our minds from everything that we need to pray about, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there are multiple prayer requests, and some probably of which we may have missed, but let's go through. Uh, always pray for Brother Gosnell for his health and strength and healing. Pray for Brother Shannon. We're glad that he's here this morning. We're thankful for you, brother, and we are praying for you in body, mind, soul, and spirit. Pray for Sandra Miley's dad, Jimmy Avin. He's still on hospice, and we haven't heard anything else, really. He's just hanging in there in Eupora Hospital. Pray for my grandparents. I'm glad they're here this morning. John and Faye Bruce, pray for them and healing in their bodies. I know he's still having a little problems with his shingles, but God is healer, right? Amen. God is healer. Pray for uh, Sister Carolyn, Brother Mike, and Tiffany in their bodies and just give them strength. Thankful for y'all, brother. Um, pray for Dorothy, Rick, Michael, and Haley. God knows their needs. Pray for Sister Charlene. She's having trouble with diverticulitis and with possibly an ulcer. They think maybe in the colon. So she's having a lot of pain. And of course, with all the cloudy weather and the changes of the weather, her arthritis is acting up. And so pray for her healing. Pray for Sister Rose's family, her cousin that we've been praying for for a while. She passed away on Friday. So please pray for her and her family, for God to bring strength and peace to them and comfort in the time of need. A friend of mine, her name is Forrest Rains from Pontotoc. Her maiden name is McCuller. Her dad is in desperate need of physical healing in his body. Last I heard, please pray for him. His name is Shelby McCuller. Um, I don't know really much of anything except for his oxygen has been very, very low, which is very dangerous. So please pray for Shelby McCuller and his family, his wife Donna, his daughters Forrest and Elizabeth and their family. Um, and then pray for Sister Lori Yates and her family as they uh, celebrated Brother Billy's life on Friday uh, with the service. She sends her gratitude and sincere thanks for everyone who prayed, who came by and visited, who called, who sent a message, a Facebook messenger, sent food or a card. She said, you just don't know. These were the, her words. You just don't know how much it meant to come in and not have to worry about fixing food, that it was just an open table, come and go, that it just took so much of a load off of her and her family. So thank you all for what you did for her. And she will be back soon, she says. She's going to get a little bit of rest, but pray for her. She loves each and every one of you. And just pray for her strength and her peace in the upcoming days. Uh, uh, our scripture for today, as we go to the Lord in prayer, is Hebrews 4, 15, and 16. It says, oh, and this is something I'm covering tonight. All right, it says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things, just as we are yet without sin. Amen. Therefore, let's approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace for help at the time of our need. Jesus is our high priest. He went through everything you and I would 
ever faced while he was here on this earth. God, in the infinitism of his majesty, wrapped himself in human flesh and came down on this earth as Jesus Christ so that we can comprehend and understand his grace and his mercy. And he who knew no sin went through every temptation that we would ever face. He faced sickness. He faced anger. He faced depression. He faced anxiety. Whatever you're facing, he faced it. Yet he faced it without sin because he is God and he had to be the spotless lamb who shed his blood to die on the cross for us for the forgiveness of our sins. And even before then, he bore the 39 lashes on his back for the healing of our bodies that by his stripes in Old and New Testament, we are and were healed past, present, and future every day in our lives from now until we take our last breath. We have healing. We have the promise of healing for Jesus Christ took that price for us. He paid that price for us. And now he, he conquered death, hell, and the grave when he rose from the dead on the third day. And he stands at the right hand of God. He sits there at the right hand making intercession for us constantly. He never sleeps. He loves you. And he makes intercession for you. He knows what you need. He knows what you're going through. So we can have confidence and go boldly before the throne of grace of God knowing that we have a mediator. We have an intercessor who knows what we're going through and who makes that intercessory prayer for us because he loves us. So let's go to the Lord in prayer over these knees. Let's believe our Father God. Let's believe Jesus Christ for these knees this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. We bless your name, God. We thank you, Jesus, for you are mighty and wondrous in all your ways, God. We thank you, Jesus, that you bore strikes for the healing of our bodies, God. By your stripes, we were and we are healed, God, past, present, and future, God. No matter what we're going through, no matter how great or how small, nothing is insignificant. Nothing is too hard for you, God. Nothing is too big. God, you hold control over it all. And we thank you, Jesus, that you are the author and the finisher of our faith, God. And we can come boldly before you, God, with our needs, knowing that we have a high priest who makes intercession for us. And right now, in the name of Jesus, every need present, God, those who need a spiritual uplifting in their bodies, God, in their spirits, God, from depression or from anxiety or from worry, God, uplift their spirits, God, lift up their eyes and their head for their redemption draweth nigh. God, touch those who need healing in bodies from COVID, from cancer, from sinuses, from bronchitis, God, from those who are facing arthritis, from diverticulitis, God, from ulcers, Jesus, God, upcoming surgeries, God, those recovering from surgeries. No need is too great or too strong or too big for you, God. You are Lord over all. God, meet each and every need, God, spiritually, physically, emotionally, financially, homes, marriages, families, God, in Jesus' name, every need we lift up to you, God, and believe together for your will to be done in our lives. God, greater are you that is in us than he that is in this world. We give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. We declare it is so in Jesus' name, and we declare it by saying, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you stand if you're able this morning and let's worship the Lord. And Hallelujah. You feel his presence here? I feel his presence in the house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I am thinking of the rapture in our blessed home on high when the redeemed are gathering in. How we'll raise the heavenly anthem in that city in the sky when the redeemed are gathering in. 
saints will sing redemption story with their voices clear and strong with the redeemed are gathering in and the angels all will listen for they cannot join that song when the redeemed Amen. How many came anticipating and expecting God to show up and meet your needs this morning? Can I tell you, the Bible says if a man doesn't have faith, let not that man expect that he will receive anything from the Lord. So you've got to come believing and expecting. And we hope you did this morning. Amen. Amen. We're about to come to you for your tithes and your offerings. Uh, just want to expound on why Brother Andrew is pushing this $25 deposit so hard. If you get that deposit in by today, and even if you send it by PayPal, if it shows by midnight tonight, we're going to be able to get you in, uh, your child in for $180 after that deposit. No, it's $160. The church will pay 80 of it, and you'll pay the other 80. Now, that's a good deal. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, we don't want to miss this deadline, because if we do, it goes to 200 and something dollars, and how many know that's hard, that's hard to do at Walmart nowadays, yeah. much less say for <laughs> youth camp. So uh, we want your kids to be blessed, and if they go, I promise you they will receive a blessing. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's stand, if you would, go to the Lord in prayer. I'm going to ask Brother Mike if he'll pray over our tithes and offerings. Father God, it's so, such a uh, privilege to be able to come and worship in your house. And we ask you to bless these offerings. And uh, tenfold, yes. we just love you, Lord. It's all about you, Jesus. Yes, Amen. God. Amen. Oh, yes. Amen. <coughs> all right, now, as we continue in the spirit of worship this morning, I can feel him in this house this morning. Don't you feel him this morning? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes I just love to come early before worship and I just love to sit here and pray and praise through the sanctuary. I've been feeling them all morning long. Let's pray this morning that no matter what comes our way, let's take our eyes off of our situations for just a little while. And let's focus on God this morning and say, Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want, God. You're all we need. Come rest on us this morning. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. Have your way in this house today. Have your way in this place today, God. In our, in our bodies, Lord Jesus. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Have your way within us. Come rest within us, God. Fill us up with your presence, Jesus. Fill this house with your presence. All over Facebook, fill it with your presence, God. Lord, let your will be done today, God. We worship you. We praise you, God. We take our eyes off of our situations. We take our eyes off of the waves around us, God. And we focus on you, Lord Jesus. We focus on you. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way. Move in this nation. Move in our hearts. Move in our families, God. Rest on us. Rest on us. Rest on us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As the Spirit was moving over the waters, 
spirit come move over us come rest on us come rest on us as the spirit was moving over the water spirit come move over us come rest on us come rest on us as the spirit was moving
let's let heaven on in. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Oh, fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on in. Come rest on us.
starts to vanish Every hopeless situation It ceases to exist And when you walk into the room The dead begin to rise Cause there is resurrection life And all you do into the room does when you walk into the room sickness starts to vanish sickness starts to vanish in every, every hopeless situation they cease to exist it ceases to exist and when you walk into the room the dead begin to rise cause there is resurrection life in all you
souls. Come and have your way, have your place on the throne of our hearts. Oh, fill us with your spirit, Lord. Fill us with your presence, Lord. We give it all to you, Lord. We give you all control. We give you our all. Everything I have is yours, Lord. Everything I am is yours, Lord. Use it for your glory. Shine through me, Lord. Fill me with your spirit, Lord. Fill me till my cup overflows. Until it overruns into the saucer, Lord. Until it overflows to others around me, Lord. Until it overflows into their lives. And makes a change. Makes a change. Makes a change, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 And I surrender all oh, yes, I, oh, I surrender all, all to
verse again all to Jesus. Oh, all to Jesus. I surrender. Trust him. I will ever love and trust him. I'll trust him. Hallelujah. In his presence. In his presence. I will daily. Raise your hands and sing that chorus one more time. He doesn't require you to be perfect. He wants your surrender. I surrender. surrender all. against illness, God, in this house, each and every person this morning, God. Lord, we rebuke that sickness in all of them's body this morning, Lord. We pray that you touch all of our members from the back row all the way to the front of this building, God. We know that you gave your life, God, and by every stripe, Lord, you said that we would have our healing. That atonement is already made in Jesus' name. Yes. Hallelujah. Hey. Mm, I love you, son. Yes. Yes. Need prayer. 
Andrew, bring, Andrew, bring the north north. Brother, you and you come here over the last few weeks. But a lot of people have passed through our church that didn't stay in our church. But I'm going to tell you why they don't stay. They're used to mediocre, complacent, dead churches. If I'm on route for a football team, I want one that's at least got a little spark. And at least they're going to try to win the game. God purchased the church. He said with his blood and the gates of hell would not prevail against it. Let's stand this morning. I want you to extend your hand this way if you would. How many believe in unity that God will touch and heal right now? Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, we come against the spirit of infirmity, God, that's been in their house. God, we ask for divine healing right now, Lord, that that atoning blood of Jesus would be applied, God. Touch John in his body, Lord. We rebuke the devourer and the enemy from this house right now, Father. We plead the blood and ask that the power of the Holy Spirit would reign supreme in that home, Father. Right now, God, in unity, we ask believing for divine healing in our body right now, God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. Come right here. Andrew, get another call. We're going to know it. Calvary. Been in a 
attack against this home. Lord, we know that as man, it's God, that the enemy has come in and seems like he's completely annihilated, God. Just for me. He that's in the world. name. Touch him right now. I know he's watching on Facebook. God, touch him right now. God, healing now, Father, in the mighty series. We're going to talk about how many of you have studied in depth on the glorified body of Christ. We're going to talk about that in a few different places. I had the word today. But I want to start off with Proverbs 29 18. We're going to be talking about John's vision of Jesus. We're going to be talking about the Mount of Transfiguration. And y'all know me, if I can get there, we'll talk about where Mary saw the risen Christ. We may not get there, but we'll go as far as we can. Amen? Amen. But I want to start off in Joel chapter 2. Now I'll start off in Proverbs 29 18. It says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. Now, what is a, a vision? That's the ability that God blesses people spiritually that they can look through the Spirit and that they can see the way things could be or will be. Amen? Amen. And God all through, you say, well, I don't know if I believe in that. Well, you don't believe in the Bible then. Right. Because in the Old Testament, they prophesied about a Messiah that would come. They had visions of a Messiah, dreams. Amen? So where there's no vision or where people can't even anticipate a good outcome or a good future, they're not reading God's Word. The Lord says, I know the thoughts that I think concerning you to prosper you and to give you a hope and a future. And you know a lot of places you go today when you encounter a group of people that claim to be Christians, they look like somebody that just got up out of a dentist chair that had a root canal. They're unhappy. Their lips are soiled up. God's people are not supposed to be that way. The joy of the Lord is our strength. So if you ain't got no strength, you ain't got no joy in the Lord. Amen. Amen. So he says, where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. What's the law? God's commandment. God's standard. See, last week we had a jack in the box up here, or an elephant in the box. 
And we turned the handle and the music played. And some people said, it startled me when the lid popped up and out come. There's going to be a time that God's going to startle some people. It's coming very shortly. We are in the end of time in the last days. And there's no time. See, I, I, I had a luxury when I was young that young people I don't believe have today. I don't believe there's time to play around. I believe that we are on the very cusp of the second coming of the Lord. And I believe we need to be ready and have a vision for what God has got laid out for his people and his end time church. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, I, I'm going to stay as calm with it this morning as I can stay. But, but I want us to get the word, okay? It says in Joel chapter 2, verse 1, Blow the trumpet in Zion and sound the alarm in my holy mountain. If there's ever been a day where preachers need to be telling people, God is merciful. God is gracious. But he's a holy God and he's going to judge sin. He who sins, that soul shall, shall surely die. We need to be living in a time where we're running after the heart of God. Where we're focused and we're stayed. Our hearts are stayed on him. We need to stay in his word. We need to stay in prayer. We need to ask God to give us a vision for what he wants us to be doing. Because there's souls hanging in the balance, church. Amen. It says, sound the alarm in, in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, for it is at hand. How many know you closer down? I've seen things, I'm going to tell you something. Have you ever seen people do something and you think, ooh, that's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Turn your TV on. Just when you think they can't do anything more ignorant, they do it. And you know what they're doing it with? Your money that you're paying in taxes. You know what they, they want to do in the schools? They want to brainwash your children in a school that your taxes are paying for. We're in a day that's morally bankrupt. We're in a day where people don't have any vision. And even folks that claim they know the Lord and go to church, they really don't know him. He said in the end of time, there'll be a people with their lips say do me service and their heart is far from me. They can cry Jesus all day long. If they live in like hell, they're probably going when they die. Yes. Amen. Amen. So let's go back here. It says, For that time is at hand, a day of darkness and gloominess. How many of you are very careful what doctor you go to and which one of them are you allowed to stick you with what shot? That's right. Come on now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm to the point. <laughs> It's overkill. I, I'm almost scared to go get a shot for a cold because I don't know what they're going to stick in there. Amen? Amen? You say, well, I don't believe that. I'm going to tell you something. Ignorance ain't no excuse. And there's been some really funny stuff going on in our nation in the last three years. I've had friends worked in funeral homes that say we're doing 15 to 20 times the volume we were in 2018. Wow. What changed? The sun's still rising every morning. It's still setting every night. But something changed in our nation. We are a nation that has forgotten God Almighty. We're a nation that don't have a vision for the ways of the Lord anymore. The church is still supposed to be giving off a light. We're supposed to be a beacon in the darkness. But if the light is dark... How dark shall that light be? Amen. Come on now. We need to be thinking on the ways of the Lord. He says, like the morning cloud spread over the mountain, a people come great and strong, the like who has never been, nor will there ever be such after them, even for many successive generations. A fire devours before them. You know, people are talking about these revivals that's breaking out. You had one broke out at Mississippi State University the other day. Do you know their mayor is a lesbian? Don't you know she don't want revival and people there worshiping and praising God and speaking in tongues because the God that I'm serving, he's against that lifestyle. Amen. He, lo he loves the homosexual. He loves the lesbian, but he don't love the sin. Amen. And a tree that bears no fruit is hewn down and cast into fire. You know what you get if you put a bunch of men, you put a hundred men on an island that only love men and there ain't no women there and you go back in a hundred years and you know what you got? You got a hundred dead men. Come on now. 
Because men without women, that's not the plan of God. There ain't no way they can be fruitful, and that union is hewn down and cast into the fire. Amen. You know, people say, Whoo, Pastor, you going to go? I, I, look, I, I'm tired of that. We're going to tell it like it is. We love them, we want them saved, but somebody's got to put the word out there. There is a God, He can deliver you from that sick lifestyle that you've got. He can deliver you from sin, He can deliver you. If you somebody that's sitting here and you're a member and you're smoking, dipping, drinking, chewing, or sleeping around, God can deliver you from that sin, and it is sin. Amen. Let's go just a little bit further. Verse 18. If you started in 12, it talks about a call to repentance. How many of you know what repentance is? That's it, God, I recognize something's in my life that ain't, ain't lining up with your will. And, and I'm not just going to... Have you ever seen people get called at something? That's, <laughs> somebody says something wrong. Somebody on TV that works for a news program or something. And they want them to, to apologize for what they say. They get up there and they say, I'm sorry. They're not sorry. They hate they got caught, but they're not sorry. See, repentance ain't telling God I'm sorry. Repentance is having a heart. You really feel condemned about what you've been doing, and you say, God, I'm going to lay down the ways of the flesh. I want to be a spiritual being from now on. I'm going to turn away from that. All things pass away. All things become new. That's what repentance is. Amen. But let's go down to verse 18 here. The land refreshed. How many of you would agree that we live in a nation that needs to be refreshed? Yes. Come on now. Eh? Yes. See, preachers, they're scared to preach it anymore because they ain't going to be politically correct if they say things. Yes. Amen. Amen. You want to wipe out syphilis, gonorrhea, AIDS, every venereal disease you can name? Let one man that has never been with a woman before marry a woman that ain't never been with any man before and let them two come together and have a vow before God and actually let them not lie and keep it. And stay together 50, 60, 70 years if God lets them live that long. That's the plan of God and disease would disappear from the face of the earth because the Bible says the marriage bed is undefiled. God's not going to give disease to what he's approved. Do you know where the disease comes in? When people begin to corrupt the plan of God. Amen? Everybody still love me? I ain't even got to my sermon yet, but we're going to have some fun today. <laughs> Said, then the Lord will be zealous for his land and pity his people. And the Lord will answer and say, behold, I will send you grain and new wine and you'll be satisfied with them and I'll no longer make you a reproach among the nations. Do you know the problem with churches today? You got churches, they are so jealous of that outbreak, that revival. It happened at Asbury. It happened in Mississippi State. It's happened to colleges all over the country. You know what Christians ought to be doing? We ought to be jumping up and down, screaming to the top of our lungs. Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord, touch our kids. Raise up a generation, God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. But see, they used to them. They used to them services where you come in and the preacher makes three points. He preaches about 15 minutes. He collects his paycheck and he goes to the house. He don't care if you live like hell Monday through Saturday. I do. I care. Amen. Yeah. When I walk in the funeral home, I care. Yeah. I want to know that I preach the truth to them. I want to know they accepted it. I want to know they live by it. I want to know that when I go to heaven, I'm going to meet them there one day. Amen. 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 Let's go down further. Let's go to Joel. 2 verses 21. Let's go there. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done marvelous things. Do you know back in the 80s, that's a great day to live in. Come on now. Everybody didn't have to go to the grocery store for their food. My granddaddy raised a huge garden. He bought, he bought very little food. 
He'd go to Piggly Wiggly and get a little Crisco and some sugar and flour, but everything else, Papa was raising it. What he wasn't raising with fishing and catching it, or hunting and killing it. Hallelujah. Amen? Yeah. See, but they don't want a people who, uh, who can do that anymore. The government don't want that. Right. They want a people that's dependent on them. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. You better get your mind and your heart focused and stayed on God because God is able to take everything that's happening and turn it around and refresh this land. Amen? The Lord has done marvelous things. Do not be afraid, you beasts of the field, for the open pastures are springing up. Do you know where there's barren and desert and waste places? God said, I can even make a river in the middle of the desert for you. And we worried about little things. Anybody in here that God ain't never made sure that in the past you had the money to pay the bill? He ain't never made sure you got well when you were sick? We need to look back and remember our blessings. That way we're not discouraged when we look forward. Amen? And he says, For the old pastures are springing up and the tree bears its fruit. The fig tree and the vine. And they don't... Hey, it's not just that they have one or two figs on them. Listen to what he says here. He says they yield their strength. It's going to be a bumper crop for you. Anybody notice that people are suffering all around God's people? But God's people have flourished over the last three or four years. Come on now. Our needs have been met. You can look at my belly and tell I ain't done without something to eat. I can look, I hate to tell you, I can look at yours and tell you ain't either. Amen? Lord, Lord, help us. <laughs> Listen to what he says. Let's go back here. Let's go to 21 again. He says, the Lord has done marvelous things. Don't be afraid. The open pastures are springing up, and the trees will bear their strength. They'll yield in strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain faithfully. When you look in the past, God always met your need. Yeah. That's the former rain. Yeah. Guess what? God's meeting your need right now in the very present. And he's me. Look what it says. He, he says right here, he says, I sent the form of rain faithfully, and he said, I'll cause the rain to come down for you. Amen, come on now. The Bible said he owned the cattle on a thousand hills. If I'm doing with that, I want him to butcher one for me. I'm his child. But I'm going to live right. And I'm going to come to his house. And I'm going to lift up holy hands and magnify his holy name. Amen. 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 Well, Brother Little, the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You sure did, and I sure did. Oh, but thank God. Come on now. God doesn't see your sin anymore. If you've repented, He sees the righteousness. You become the righteousness of Christ. That's God meeting your need. And He says, He'll cause the rain to come down for you, the former rain and the latter rain. God said, if you could get to your future right now today, I'm already in your future, already making provisions for you already. Didn't the Lord say He knew you before you were born, before you were formed in your mother's womb? Isn't that awesome, God, that knows you before you were, before your framework was even, your bones were put together in the womb. God already knew you. And he already knew your days. Christians ought not be scared to die. Why? Number one, you going to do it. Come on now. Number two, if you're a child of God, it ain't nothing to fear. You going to heaven when you die. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait for the day that I don't have to listen to a stinking lying Democrat. Exactly. If a word comes out of their mouth, that's what it is. Lies and poison. They won't corrupt your children. Got kids thinking they're dogs and cats. We got people in Whitfield out there that's got better sense than that. Yeah. The man can't even walk up the ramp to the plane without busting his rear end and his noggin. Yeah. Come on now. And we got these people telling us how we ought to raise our kids. I'm going to raise my son in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. I don't want no son-in-law when my son gets married. I want me a daughter-in-law and some grandbabies and a boy named Steve can't give them to me. Somebody said, you get kicked off of Facebook. I've had worse things happen to me in my life than getting kicked off of Facebook. So what? God said, I'll make the ladder rain come down. The threshing floors will be full of wheat. You know, a threshing floor, a huge rock in the Old Testament. 
They'd, they'd go out and gather the harvest. They'd bring it in. They'd beat the wheat. They'd throw it up in the air with these forks. And the wind would blow through it. And they'd drive the dust, the dust and the husk. Everything that wasn't pure grain blew away from that threshing floor. And the pure grain would fall to the threshing floor. You know what I wish? I wish God would make our church into a threshing floor. I wish he'd beat everybody's hide that's got sin in their life. And I wish he'd throw them in the air. And the Holy Ghost would sweep through them. And all that nasty, sinful junk you got in your life. All that trash you look at on the computer. I wish the Holy Ghost would convict everybody in this house of that stuff. Hallelujah. Then you think you got the nerve you'd like to be a teacher in church or tell your pastor how to pastor a church. How about this? Let me tell you how to get saved first. Amen. Praise. I serve a holy God. Hallelujah. And without holiness, no man sees God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We got a new man said, I told you reserve judgment, brother. He said, Oh, y'all seem like y'all said you better reserve judgment. <laughs> hey, Amen. Lord have mercy knows. Let's go back. He said, Your threshing floor will be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with new wine and new oil. You know what oil and wine represent the Holy Spirit. Wouldn't it be wonderful if our vats overflowed with new wine? Wouldn't it be wonderful if our church was so full of the Holy Spirit, people on the highway driving by said, I felt something I had to come in here. And when they got here, they couldn't hardly stay in the building if they wasn't saved, that they'd run out the door or come to the altar and give their life to Christ. Amen. Amen. Lord, he said, and the vats will overflow when you wine. You know what happens when you overflow? How many of you like to live in the overflow? Come on now. If you invite me to your house to eat, you say, we're going to have biscuits, mashed potatoes, and, and, and brown gravy, and fried chicken. Let me tell you, don't you put no one little gnarled up chicken leg on me. I'm coming to your house to eat. I'm trusting God you living in the overflow. Amen? One chicken leg make a boy my size mad. Look at John back at John said, we fixing a whole chicken and pass to come to the house. Hey, Amen. And he said, your vats will overflow. So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust. You know what most church folks, especially you hear the preachers today, you know what they do? When they get there, boy, they start nailing this scripture to the floor about the locust and the swarms and all that. They say, that's the old devil. Old devil sent the locust and, and they had a famine. That's not what the scripture said. Look what it says. He says, so I'll restore to you the years that the swarming locusts eat, the crawling locusts, the consuming locusts, and the chewing lo locusts. My great army, which who? I sent among you. You know why America's been having such trouble? We're a nation that forgot God. We got arrogant. We thought we could do it on our own. Amen? You know, it reminds me of a story. How many of you know Jesus was a storyteller? I'm not talking about lies. Corinthians said all liars are going to hell. He told stories that would relate to the people. And there was this story that went around that said this farmer, he lived way out in the country and there's an old country church. He had a pretty good preacher. He, he, he wanted his preacher. He said, preacher, let me tell you about what I got going on down at the farm. He said, I had about five acres that was down in the bottom. He said, man, there was rocks everywhere, and there was, it was all kind of uh, briars and everything everywhere, and stumps everywhere. He said, I've been working on it for two years. He said, and this year I finally planted a crop. He said, yeah, I just want you to come out there, and I want you to see what I've been working on, what i got going on. So the pastor said, I will. Next Sunday after church, I'm coming out there. So he walks down the hill, and he sees the farmer down there, and he says, oh, my. This is one of the most beautiful pieces of land I've ever seen in my life. He said, look how clean. You got a stream running right down there below it. He said, man, this is awesome. I've never seen such big watermelons. Look, look, look at all. Look at this corn. Look at all the Boy, he's just bragging on everything. He said, boy, God sure has been good to give you such big watermelons. God's been good to give you such a bumper crop of tomatoes over here. And God's been good. Look, look at them butter beans. Hey, they about to break the bush down. He said, man, God is an awesome God. And he looks over to old farmer and he had an old sour look on his face. He said, you ought to have seen it when God was trying to do it by himself. He said, when I came into the picture, things got better. I helped him out just a little bit. 
Do you know you got a lot of people that look at life that way today? Come on now. They don't think about God could have let you have leukemia. You could be laying flat on your back. You could have lost your wife last week. She could have been in the funeral home. Your kids could be sick or they could be on drugs. God is a good God. And the Bible says it's He who gives us power to receive our wealth. He, you couldn't even get down there and plow that thing. You couldn't even get down there and fertilize that thing without God giving you your strength. Can I tell you something? When you sit up on the side of the bed this morning and you wasn't, you couldn't have done that if God hadn't have gave you. He said, I'll hold your very next breath right in the palm of my hand. We need to get back to thanking God. Yes, yes. 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 Amen. 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 Help us, Jesus. I've had people say, well, you had COVID twice. You lost your daddy. You're crippled. You know what? I looked at a man that didn't have no legs. He rides around, pushes himself on a skateboard. Thank God, I got legs. Amen. Come on now. People say, wonder why I ain't blessed like some people financially. God ain't going to give you what he knows will make a fool out of you. Come on. Some of you, God gave you $1,000 and you didn't pay tithes on that. Why would he give you a million? That's right. That's right. Come on now. That's right. People say, well, you know, I don't know if I don't, I'm going to tell you what, if you ain't paying, if you ain't, you're tithing in the church, you a thief and you didn't steal from me and you didn't steal from this church. You stole from God, friend. And I can't think of anybody else that I'd rather steal from less. That's right. Amen. Amen. People say, oh, Pastor, I challenge you. I show you what I give. I give me. I got one better than that. I give my son. I give my wife. We sold out on the work of the Lord. We want to see this place prosper. We want to see new people and new souls come in this church. We want to be an outreach to the hurting. Amen? I watched a movie the other night. Touch me. How many, how many of y'all watch this uh, series they got? What's that we watch? The, the Chosen. How many of y'all watch that in here? Uh, oh, look, y'all need, need to Google or YouTube. What do they need to do, Andrew? I don't know about all that. Angel Lap. You need to pull that up, The Chosen. They got a bunch of little 30, 40 minute clips. Man, it, it almost bring the Old Testament to life, you watching this. Well, they had a movie come out. What's the name of it, y'all? Jesus Revolution. How many of you can tell? I'm going to tell you something. I did enough drugs in the 80s when my wife sent me to the store. If she said bread, milk, and eggs, she better write it down. But I can quote that Bible all day long. Isn't it amazing how God does things like that? But this old preacher is based on 1971. And he had a dead church. They've been in a dead church. Come on now. I don't like a dead church. You know where dead things belong? In a cemetery. Most time, if you look at a dead church, there's a reason. It's got a dead pastor in it. Amen. Hey, if the word ain't going out, how will they know unless a preacher preaches it to them? That's what the word says. But you know, they had this, this hippie. And this pastor in this little dead church invited this hippie. He had long hair. He looked like you would picture Jesus looking. <laughs> Amen. And he come and, and he sat in church. And boy, everybody in church was just looking at him. All 20 of them in their little dead church. So the pastor says, I want y'all to meet my friend. He said, I'm going to ask him to stand up and say a few words. And boy, the, the guy got up and spoke really eloquently, you know, and about the Lord. See, sometimes we judge a book by the cover outside. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hey, we've had people come to our church before, walk in the dining hall in there and ask somebody, where's the pastor? They say, oh, he's in, there. he's in the dining hall. They're looking around. They don't know where he's at. You know why? Most of them are stuck up and they're wearing such expensive clothes. That's right. Come on now. And they think that's what sets them apart. I want the anointing. I want God's stamp of approval on my ministry. I want to see people get the word. I want to see your life transformed. Amen. So he says, we're going we're gonna to open our doors to, the, to these guys. They call them hippies. Amen. You know, today, a lot of older people go, well, you know, these young people are on drugs. My God, if I could count how many joints you rolled up in your day. <laughs> Come on. You're good at looking to splinter in somebody else's eye while you got that two before hanging out of your ball socket. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We forgot we were young, stupid, too. Right. Amen. Yeah. 
But you know what? They started inviting more and more and more of the hippies. And then before you know it, all the stuck-ups were on this side. No offense to you guys. All the hippies were on this side. After church, they wanted to meet with the pastor. <laughs> how, how many know you ain't been in a back room? You ain't been in a meeting that you've been in a back room church of God meeting. There's some nasty religious spirits. Amen? He said, what if your bishop is watching this? Well, bless God, my bishop's a smart man. He already knows we got some nasty religious spirits in some places. Amen? Let's just call it what it is. Come on now. But you know, he said, we're going to open our doors to him. He invited him in. So this guy come in, he said, Pastor, do you know you're fixing to lose some of the best tithe payers you got in this church? Is what's going to happen. He said, have you looked at our new carpet? They're coming in bare, uh, bare, barefoot. Their feet are nasty. So the next Sunday come around, and there was a long line trying to get into church. The pastor was sitting there in a chair. He had a basin, and he was washing their little bare feet. Amen, brother. And he said, welcome to the house of God. And he'd hug them. They'd go on into church. That's it. So when they got in there, the building was packed. You know, Jesus said, I didn't come for the well. Yes. Come on now. Amen. He said, I came for the sick. If you will, you don't need a physician. He didn't say, and he wasn't saying it was well, by the way. Most of the ones who think they're the wellest, that's the sickest ones in the whole bunch. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Oh, oh, religious spirits. Yes. But you know... He washed their feet, and he let the guys know, hey, now they're not getting the carpet dirty. Mm -hmm. So right in the middle of, it, of his sermon, he says, you know, folks, he said, this door is open from now on to anybody and everybody. Amen. He said, but a, go, a door goes two ways. The door will bring you in, and the door will take you out. Right. And they had three people got up and left. Now, you know, I've been passing a long time. You may have a new pastor come in, three people get up and walk out, and you know what he wants to do? He wants to have a stroke and his hand draw up. <laughs> you know what I call it? The blessed exodus. Amen. <laughs> Amen. If they got that nasty, dirty, rotten, low-down spirit, Amen. hit the door, Jack. Amen. Oh, somebody's singing a song back here. And don't you come back no more, no more, no more. Yeah. I'm sick of that junk. Yeah. We need to love people. Yes. Love covers a multitude of sin. Amen. Oh, now we on board now. We on board. I got, I got four pages to preach here. There ain't very much more. But I ain't even finished with the first one yet. So we'll keep going. Amen. Let's go back here. The Lord says, I'm going to, that great army which I sent among you. See, it ain't nothing like God knocking your legs out from under you. Pride goeth before a fall and a haughty spirit before destruction. Amen? When we get to thinking we thumb body, somebody lift your thumb in there. I'm thumb body. You ever seen people like that? Boy, they walk in the room and they go, whoo, you blessed today. I'm here. Lord, help us. <laughs> I'm still being sweet. Amen. The Lord says you'll eat in plenty and be satisfied. I accept that promise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I like to eat plenty and I like to be satisfied with it. Yes. And you'll praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be put to shame. Yes. Come on, if you skip on down to 28, it says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I'll pour out my spirit on some flesh. Oh. oh. Come on now. Man, woman, child, black, Hispanic, white. Come on now. Let's get over ourselves. Do you know what we need to do? We need to open the doors and say, come as you are. God will clean you up. How many of you get clean before you take a shower? They say, I don't know if I can go down there or not. You know, I got a lot of sin in my life. Bring it on. I got a God. His grace goes further than your sin. He found me in the awfulest place a man's ever been in his life, and he delivered me from every bondage, every drug, alcohol, hatred in my life. Some of you's got that. You claim you're a child of God, and you hate people all day long. You ain't no child of God. The Bible said if you can't love your brother whom you have seen, how can you love God whom you've not seen? Let's get it right. Amen. 
He said, and afterward I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams. I got a problem with this because I've been having dreams. And I didn't think I was old yet because I ain't but 56 years old. Oh, what am I, 55? He can be 56. You see, you start losing count. Amen? Amen. And it's, young men will see visions. Amen? Amen? And also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I'll pour out my spirit in those days. Y'all, hey, how many of y'all think it's a sin for a woman to get up in the pulpit and preach? I had a revival at my last church. My deacon comes walking around the back of the building, walking down the side, and I can tell he can talk to me. Y'all know who I'm talking about, Chuck Frittle. He leans down in my ear. He said, Pastor... There's a visiting preacher in his congregation sitting on the other side of the building. He said he likes you, but he absolutely does not respect the way that you let your wife open a service and have prayer over these people. Mm. And with the sweetest, calmest demeanor that I know to have, I leaned in his ear and I said, go tell him he can take his 16 and go back to his little dead church. I don't care what he likes over here. Praise God. Come on now. I've seen some women that was a lot more anointed than some of these guys they've appointed in some of these poor pits. Amen. <laughs> we still, y'all still love me. I hope you do. I like loving me. Amen. <laughs> oh Lord. He said, and I'll show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. You say, I don't know about all this blood business. How many of you watched them blood moons that took place a few years back? And you know what they said? Hey, y'all need to watch this. Go out in the yard and watch it. It ain't going to happen again for another 200 years. I ain't going to be here in 200 years, see? That's the reason I want to make sure I caught that, the view of that one right there. Amen. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be here next month. I'm wanting the Lord to come. It said the sun will be turned to darkness. We've seen the sun eclipse. Before the coming and great and awesome day of the Lord, and it shall, I like this, this is one of my favorites right here. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Oh, I like that part. Come on now. Uh, you, you, you know, I told her yesterday, this lady right here, she come from, her people come from Castella, Mississippi. Come on now. Now that's right up off of the bluff of the Delta right outside of Charleston. Yep. And, and I told her, I said, they got one store there. That was Witten's Grocery. And they got one church of God there. That's, Cas that's Casilla Stonefield Church of God. And, and see, back in the day, I went to church all the time. Back when I was a teenager. How many of y'all were that surprised? I went to church all the time. I went there and stole gas out of the parking lot. You yes. I was faithful. Every time they had a revival, we got a tank full. I had a buddy. He knew just how to put that water hose in that tank and about, to, and about that third puff, guess what? She is running. But, you know, we're sweet, though, because it wasn't digital like it is now in the cars. We could see the gas needle going down. He said, oh, stop. You know, man, they're a long way from a gas station out here. We need to leave enough to go get some gas. <laughs> but you know what happened? They was in the church, and they were shouting and running the aisles and speaking in tongues. And I'm out there, and I'm watching out for my buddy stealing the gas. And you know what I was thinking, John? What in the world would keep people in church till 11 o'clock at midnight? And I thought, if this thing's still having revival tomorrow night, I'm coming down here, and I'm walking in there, I'm going to find out. And you know, I found out, because when I sat down on the back row, I thought being on the back, you could escape God's conviction. I think God pours out conviction starting on the back row and lets it work its way forward. Amen? Because, boy, he had me, and I couldn't do nothing but just sit there with my jaw dropped wide open. And I knew that I had encountered something. See, a lot of our churches now, people go in them. They leave just like they came. There's no conviction. There ain't no reason for them to change. You know what? A lot of times they encounter people that's mean to them. Somebody, you, some church, anybody ever went to a church, nobody shook your hand, said nothing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh Lord, be nice. Yes, Lord. I, I, I want to read y'all the scripture. What time is it anyhow? 1221. Lord, have mercy. We got 40 more minutes. <laughs> Let me clean my glasses up. That's a long time to go with sweat on your glasses. How y'all doing out there? Amen. 
they go, he crazy. <laughs> yeah, y'all knew that. I've been here long enough. Amen. Let's go back. Let's look at Revelation chapter 1, verse 9 through 18. I, John, both your brother and companion in tribulation. What is tribulation? Jesus told us in this world you'll have tribulation. But fear not, I have overcome the world. Anybody in here ain't never had no trouble in your life? Come on. Is there anybody in here that ain't never been lied on in your life? Or had somebody to hate you and be jealous of you? You ain't, hey, you ain't got to market cornered, amen? I, I, I thought I had enemies when I run the nightclubs and smoke weed. I didn't meet bad people until I came to church. Come on now. Because you know why? If I'm the devil, I'm going to tell you where I'm going to put my best imps. I'm sending them to church on Sunday morning to whisper in somebody's ear. Come on now. It'd be a pitiful enemy that wouldn't do that. John said, I'm your brother in tribulation. He said, I've suffered too. But the scripture said God is a very present help in a time of trouble. Anybody ever had you back to the wall, didn't know how you was going to get out, and you called on God, and all of a sudden, but God. He showed up, he showed out, and you are set free. Amen. You said, boy, I sure was lucky. You ever seen people clear and say, I'm lucky. I got out of that. The Bible said there ain't no such thing as luck. It said even the casting of the lots or the rolling of the dice is determined by the Holy Spirit. My gracious, we, we're just having fun now. And it says, In the kingdom and in the patience of Jesus Christ, I was on the island that is called Patmos. Now you know the disciples suffered many horrible deaths. Some was crucified upside down. Some had the head chopped off. Some were sawed in half. Right? right. But John had the worst one of all. According to me, it would be anyway. They stuck him on an island out in the middle of the Aegean Sea that didn't have it. Not one soul but him on it. Come on now. My cell phone, this thing gets so hot. You, ever, you know when you talk a lot and the phone gets hot? Anybody in here do that beside me? Yeah. Phone get hot. Yeah. And then you look and your battery life's almost gone. You got to plug it in for a little while. Can you imagine? See, and John didn't have no cell phone with him back then. I don't think they had no AT&T or Verizon or none of them guys. They wasn't around back then. And they, they exiled John and put him on the island. By, you put me on the island by myself, I'd be like that guy in that movie that had that big old uh, volleyball and had a face painted on it called it Wilson. I got to have somebody to talk to. Hey, Amen. Hey, I want y'all to talk to each other too. Whatsoever things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, of good report. Amen. Right. Don't start sowing poison. That's right. Amen. That's right. The Bible says, let no corrupt communicate. That means not one word. Amen. Everything come out of our mouth, it ought to edify somebody Amen. and lift them up. Right. Amen. Y'all still love me. Amen. And John said, I'm going to tell you why I've put on this island because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. You start telling people about Jesus today, they don't mind you talking about Allah, Buddha, anybody else. You can even say the name of God because people, they got rocks and trees they call God. Do you know, do you know they, they say Beyonce is a God. Did y'all know that? Come on now. Gods don't die. Gods don't die. You can say God all day long, but when you start saying Jesus, you watch them. They start squirming. They start getting upset. Right. Amen. You know, when people say, we don't want to hear that prayer over there, I get louder with it. Father, in the name of Jesus, <laughs> the name that is above every name, God. <laughs> Last I checked, we're still free. It's really a lie and a fallacy, but they say we are. Amen. So I'm going to act like we are until they make me not be free. But, but he says, I was put there for the testimony of Jesus Christ, and I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. He was lifted up by the Holy Spirit to a place to where God could show him things about the apocalypse and the end of time. See, a lot of people say, I'm scared of that book of Revelation. Don't be scared of Revelation. At the very beginning of it, it said, Blessed is the man who reads this book and understands the words of this, uh, of this book. Do you know if you want to be blessed, read Revelation. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> a lot of things are symbolic in there. He said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord. Oh, man, wouldn't it be wonderful if everybody come to church and just get in the Spirit? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I ain't talking about when them churches take you in the back room and trains you how to speak in tongues. Oh, come on. They start out with, I ride on my bike, who stole my Honda, C-O-C-A-C-O-L-A. Come on. Come That's not speaking in tongues. Right. You 
you'll know it when the Holy Ghost hits. All the babies in the house is crying when the real Holy Ghost moves. All of a sudden, the hush comes over them and the house gets calm. You feel hair stand up on the back of your neck and you got chill bumps on your arm. People say, well, I don't know if I believe you came a day late and a dollar. That's like telling me banana pudding don't exist. I done ate too many bowls of it. Amen? Amen. I must be doing all right. My vest ain't left yet. Amen. Let's go back here. And John, he says, listen to what he says. He says, it was on the Lord's day, and behind me I heard a voice as a trumpet saying, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. How many of you know, before anything was, he was. He said, I am that I am that I am. Before anything was, he was. It said, in the beginning, the earth was void and without form, and darkness covered the day, uh, face of the deep. People today say, well, we believe in the Big Bang Theory. Me too. God said, let there be light. Bang! There it was. Come on now. You got people that will get offended today. If you call them a cracker, you can call me whatever you want to as long as you don't call me late for supper. I don't care about none of that mess. Amen. Amen. I'm as white as they come. I got 4% in me because I had the test run. Come on now. Last week, I think it was, I told them, people get over yourself. One but eight folks got off of the boat and every one of you came from them eight people. So just get over it. Amen. 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 <laughs> I, I had a black guy the other day fell out. I was telling somebody in the restaurant. They was talking about Black Lives Matter. I said, hey, Black Lives Matter, White Lives Matter, Fat Lives Matter, and boy, I just patted my old belly. I looked over and this black guy about to lose his breath over there. <laughs> I don't worry about stuff. Listen, Linda, I don't worry about nothing. You know why? My granddaddy took me to church. They taught me from her age. Sister Henry's Murphy. She'd hold her hands out and she'd look at me and she'd say, J.A., sing with me. And I'd never been in her little class. You know, she said, He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole wide world in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got you and me, brother, in his hand. See, y'all know that song. Look at that. Isn't it wonderful? The kids will play together. They'll love one another. They don't, they, come on now. We have to grow up and somebody has to teach us how to hate. Come on now. Well, yes, yeah, somebody's got to instill that in us. We just need to stop the ignorance. That's what we need to do. But he, he was before anything ever was. And that ain't all. When everything has passed away here, it says heaven and earth will pass away. It's going to melt with a fervent heat. He said, but when heaven and earth pass away, my word is not ever going to pass away. Who's the word? Jesus. Amen. He's here. He's eternal. He's forever. Amen. And it said, and what you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia. Ephesus, Smyrna, uh, Smyrna Pergamos, Tyria, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Then I turned to see the one who spoke with me, and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstands, one like the Son of Man, Jesus Himself. And it says, He was clothed with a garment down to His feet, and girded about the chest with a golden band. Now here John exiled on an island where there ain't nobody. But right in the middle of the worst moments of your life, you know, John felt alone because there wasn't nobody there. Anybody ever felt alone and you was in a crowd full of people? You thought, they don't understand me. Well, they might not. Oh, but you got a God. He loves you. He loves you in spite of your sin. It said, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for them. He loved you when you wasn't no stinking good. And it's not God's will that any would perish, but that all would come to repentance. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Hey, man. Oh, man. Hey, hey, I tell you what. Uh, if y'all just hang with me a few more minutes, I'll let y'all out of here. We'll get out of here by 1245. How's that? If you're looking at your digital phone right there, it's at 1231. So that means I'm going to get close for you. Amen? Amen. He said, Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me, and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to his feet, and girded about his chest with a golden band. His head and his hair were white like wool. 
as white as snow. Y'all know what white represents? Purity. If something's solid white, it's pure. You know, when, when I was a young boy, it snowed in Mississippi a lot. It don't snow here a lot, Grandma, no more. But Granddaddy, he liked to make snow cream. Anybody in here besides me has snow cream before? You, you, you know, that's wonderful stuff. You pour Eagle Bran and sugar and all kind of stuff that'll dry. Stuff that Sister Brenda would take her diabetes shot first and then she'd eat. <laughs> Amen? And, and I, he'd say, I'd say, can I go outside? Can I take the big pan, go outside and get the pan full of snow? And Papa would say, yeah. And I'd start for the door. And just by the time I grabbed the door handle, he said, don't get none that's yellow. <laughs> Y'all know what the yellow is, don't you? That means the dog doesn't track through it and use the bathroom. Amen. We don't want that. He said, you make sure ain't no dog tracks around there. Ain't nothing yellow when you get it. Make sure it's pure. And the Bible says, he said his feet, he was, his hair was like wool as white as snow and his eyes were like a flame of fire. Fire is a purifying agent. Amen. I, I got a scripture here I don't want to skip. Hang on just a second. Let's go to Matthew chapter 3. Y'all still having fun? Matthew chapter 3, let's look at 10 through 12 here. And even now, the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, ever tree which does not bear good fruit, when it comes to the house of the Lord, when it comes to your service to God, what kind of fruit are you bearing? Are you bearing good fruit? Come on now. For a pastor, it ain't hard to see. We know if you're bearing good fruit or not. If we approach you and your fruit's on the ground and flies are swarming, that ain't good fruit. Amen? But the Lord says, The axe is laid to the, to the root of the tree, and every tree which does not bear good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water under repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy. Can you imagine a man that recognized God for who he really was? He said, I ain't even worthy to tote his shoes. You go to some of these church meetings. I don't got to where I like to go in late. <laughs> then that's something I don't need to be encouraging you as a preacher to do that. But you know why I like to do that in a lot of pastors' meetings? Because you walk up and one of them looks at you and he says, "This is Bishop so and so, and this is Bishop so and so, and I'm Bishop so and so, and you are." <laughs> I'm James Little. A child of the Most High God. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. That's good. I got a bishop's life in my pocket. It ain't seen the daylight. It, it ain't been pulled out in a long time. I, I think maybe once I showed somebody here a while back in the last four years. It ain't like you pull up to Starbucks and you go, Hey, I'm a bishop. And they go, Oh, your coffee's free. <laughs> A servant, think about this now. Jesus said, I'm the Lord and Master, and if I wash feet, he said, You ought to wash feet too, he said, because a servant ain't no greater than his master. I never seen him tag the title bishop on his name. Come on. We just need to get over ourselves, love people, and love God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Oh, Lord, help us. And it says, His feet were like fine brass. You know what? Brass comes out pure when it goes through the fire. Jesus walked through the fire alive. Thirty-three and a half years, He who knew no sin became sin. Only one that never sinned. Perfect. Amen? <laughs> and it says, as if refined in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Now, the Lord put something in my spirit here about this. Now, I want to show y'all something. I, I know my phone is, uh, it, it, my phone ain't that big, but uh, I want y'all to see something here. Now, this is a picture uh, 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 of a stream. Y'all see that? Can everybody see that? Andrew, get me a microphone up there. Bring it here. Y'all see that? Look how pretty that is. See that? See that stream running right there? Now you know in the twenty-third psalm, the twenty-third psalm says that He leads me beside still waters, and He restores my soul. There's going to be moments of turmoil in your life. Is this thing on? Kick it on for me, there, bro. Can we do what and what? Yeah, come here and get it, Scott, and share it. 
I don't know how to do that. They, they, these guys here, they, now, now I want you to show a still picture first, and when I tell you, then I want you to play it, okay? Can you put it up there? Isn't it wonderful to have people know how to do this stuff? You, you know what? You know what I know about cell phones and computers? I know how to buy them. <laughs> Man, look here. We're going to do it, Alan. All right. So so I ain't got to do nothing else. All right. All right. Now, now I, want, I want them to put this picture up, and I, I, I want to make a point here. The Lord told me, he said, I want you to bring this out to the people. It says that his voice was as the sound of many waters. Now the Lord, the Lord said, Andrew, come get it. You may have to send something else to him. I don't know. You got it back here? We're going to give the devil a black eye and wait if we had to wait two minutes. Don't just take your time, brother. How many of you know that scripture says, Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. And another, they will not follow. See, you live in a day where a lot of voices are speaking to you. A lot of them are negative. Amen? We getting closer? All right. Well, I'll take a break here for a second. If y'all think I'm shortchanging you here, we'll preach another 30 minutes. I love to make that illustration every time right there. This right here. If you had that right there in hell and they had money, you could, you could bankrupt all of hell for that right there. Amen. Now the 23rd Psalm says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. And he restores my soul. Have you ever looked at still waters? See, there's times in your life you need to be led by still waters. You need to be in a quiet place. But sometimes you feel overwhelmed by life. Amen? It says, His feet were like fine brasses, refined in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Turn that just, just as loud as you can get it. And then hit play on that. Can you send the video to it? Yeah. Andrew, send in the video to you. Come in, I can find it for you right quick. Let me see it. You got to go to videos. And right there. Well, there you go. All right, now, how do you get that to him? I got it. I got it. I know when you get it, Scott, I want you to turn it up wide open. Right now, people on Facebook, I bet you I could have some fun if I do this right here. <laughs> <laughs> It's not, bring it here, Andrew. I'm going to do it this way. Bring it here. All right. Leave that picture up. No, no, don't do it yet. Let me do that. All right. I'm not going to. Hang on just a second. Now, the Bible says he has a voice as the sound of many waters. Now, now I was in the Smoky Mountains, and I love I loved to take pictures all over those mountains. I like to be around the streams, take pictures, wildlife, different things. There we go, turn it up. It's easy for you to hear that water when it's the sound of many waters. God's voice ought to be so prevalent and so strong in your life that when people begin to gossip, you don't hear it. You tune it out because you can hear the sound of many waters. When you're thinking about telling a lie, 
you say no and the Holy Spirit thumps you and you say I'm not going to lie because God's word said all liars go to hell. I'm listening to the voice of the sound of many waters. When somebody hurts you and you don't want to forgive them and the Lord says that you need to forgive others if you want the Lord to forgive you, you need to listen to the sound of many waters because he can lead you by the water and he can restore your soul. Amen? Amen. Hey, I told y'all I was going to get out of here early. I still got four minutes if I can get my glasses unfogged. And it says... He had his right hand, and in his right hand he had seven stars. How many of you know that's a biblical number for perfection? And out of his mouth went a sharp, two-edged sword. Do you know if you got sin in your life, and you hear the Word of God, and it's anointed, and somebody's preaching truth to you, it's going to feel like a knife cutting you. People say, well, I don't like that old hard preaching. Well, you don't like God's Word what it is. God's standard offends your lifestyle. That's what it is. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If I offend you, I'll apologize to you. But if God's word offended you, I ain't apologize for nothing. You need to find your knees in a prayer closet. Right. Amen. Amen. Do you know, when I was a young man, I worked in a meat market at Piggly Wiggly. Anybody remember Piggly Wiggly? Yeah. My granddaddy didn't think there's no other store beside Piggly Wiggly. And I had a friend named Berlin Taylor. And all day long, we would cut meat. And especially steaks, you know what we'd do? We'd trim them. Uh, if it had a lot of fat on it, we'd trim the fat off. Or so much of it. You'd leave a little bit. People wanted marbling. But to better cut a steak, the higher grade that it was graded, the more money you could get for the steak. Do you know in our life when the word is sharper than any two-edged sword, do you know when we allow the word to trim sin out of our life, we'll make the grade. Amen? We'll make the grade. And, and, and and it says, it says here that death talks about the Lord. It says, and his countenance was like the sun shining in his strength. Last week we talked about in him is light, is light and there is no darkness at all. Light dispels darkness. Amen. You know, you know what light is? It's the absence of darkness. See, the church needs to be a bright light. Come on, we don't need to have darkness in here. We need to be proclaiming the love and the light of Christ. Amen. And it said his countenance was like the sun shining in his strength. You remember when you was a young boy, you'd look straight up at the sun when it was just beaming at noontime. What happened? You'd look away and you'd see black spots and everything else. Wow, it was so bright it just almost took your eyesight. Amen. That's the way the Lord is. And it says, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as though I was dead. You ever see these people go, When I get to heaven, boy, I got a few things I'm going to ask the Lord. You ain't going to ask him nothing. You're going to approach the throne. You're going to feel every bit of the energy be sucked right out of your body. You're going to your knees because every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. There ain't going to be no more questions. You ain't going to care about nothing of this world because former things have passed away. Now all things have become new. There ain't going to be no questions. Amen. Amen. And he said, I fell at his feet as though dead, but he laid his right hand on me, saying, Do not be afraid, for I am the first and the last. I am he who was dead. I like that was, W-A-S, past tense. How many of you know people talk about Buddha? Come on. I, I had these people at the restaurant got mad at me. They had the Buddha sitting on the, right next to the cash register. And I had all my church folk lined up, and they're paying their bills. And you know what I did? They had one of them toothpick dispensers there. You could push a button and a toothpick pop up. I'm fascinated by little things like that. And I pushed the button and a toothpick popped up. And I just over there just trying to occupy my, because you know my mind, there's something weird about that. And I done run the toothpick in Buddha's ear and up his nose. And then I almost knocked him off the counter accident. I grabbed him, put him, I said, oh, I'm sorry. I almost broke your God. You ought to have seen that look. You know, you can go to his gravesite. He's still there. 
Hey, Krishna, he's still there. Ever God did they ever claim was a God? He's still there. Oh, but you can go to a garden tomb. You ain't going to find Jesus. They got a tomb there. They got a stone rolled back, but there's an empty slab. They ain't never found his body, and they ain't never going to find his body. Because we serve a risen Savior with healing in his wings. Why do, you, why do we anoint people and pray for them and put oil on them? The Bible said if there's any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. They'll anoint him with oil and the prayer of faith will heal the sick. Amen? And it says, do not be afraid. I'm the first and the last. I'm he who lives and was, was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of hell and of death. Death couldn't hold him. And if you're a child of God, one of these days, a trumpet is going to sound. And the ground is going to split wide. Oh, have y'all heard that song? There's going to be a ground shaking. Amen. And the dead in Christ are going to rise. And then those of us who remain, the ones that are living right, the ones who have loved him and they're looking for him at his appearing, we're going to be called up to meet him in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And, and I'm two minutes over. I done told a 120-second story. But that's close as it gets because usually you don't get out of here for 1 o'clock. And I think sometimes I could stay till 2 o'clock. Amen. How many know God is good? Amen. God is good. Now, see, I told y'all we probably weren't going to get to this. Uh, next week we'll get to the Mount of Transfiguration. We'll go further in this lesson. Amen. But God is good. And it's so good to be here in His house with His people. And I pray that the Lord bless you and keep you and to make His face shine upon you. Come on now. You, hey, we, we ain't going to revert to some of these worldly prayers. You know some of the worldly ones, they say, may, may the wind always be at your back and the sun shine on your face. <laughs> I pray that God's light shines on you and your family this week. Amen. Let's stand. Go to the Lord in prayer. I want Sister Patsy over here to dismiss us. Amen. Everybody shake hands.